which is the best place uh, in the horoscope to have natural malefics saturn rahu ketu is it the third the sixth the tenth or the eleventh the upachya houses as primarily known or is it the kendra or is it the trikon mm -hmm. or they say natural malefics are good in dostanas mm -hmm. interesting where should we put them sometimes i wonder if i was a natural malefic i would wonder where i would be sitting <laughs> Because if you search in YouTube and Google, you will always find, let's talk of Saturn. He's terrible in the first, uh, he destroys your whole life, right? Makes you pessimistic, lonely, miserable. Then second house, he de destroys your family, late marriage. Third house, he destroys relationships with siblings. Fourth house, my God, Lord Ram had fourth house Saturn, right? So rest is history <laughs> trouble with the mother or stepmother and then fifth house my god it's the worst placement because from there he aspects the second seventh and eleventh so no marriage delays in childbirth blah 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 all the houses saturn is terrible in every house right same is with rahu first house rahu you are a cheater second house rahu family members are cheaters eleventh house rahu cheater friends <laughs> seventh house rahu cheating spouse so if you go through youtube and the internet you will see that probably there is no house you will feel which is uh, well deserving for a malefic to sit okay so it seems like this but we always have to understand something either a planet is a natural malefic or a natural benefic irrespective of that that's secondary the natural traits of the planet is secondary the first primary trait of a planet is which houses does that planet rule should i repeat which houses does that planet rule all right and let's discuss in brief today regarding that as usual if you're new to the channel then please subscribe to it down below and if you want a consultation from me then please go to my website down below in the description section God is there with you all the time, even if you are running dashas of malefics. <laughs> and he will help you to come out, out of it or over it, as they say. So, you always have to understand that uh, even if a natural malefic is ruling houses which uh, give you growth in life. So, which are the houses that give you growth in life? There are only four houses in astrology where you get uh, growth actually. Okay? That is the 5th, the ninth, the 10th, and the 11th. These four houses, they give you growth as an individual. There's no other house in astrology which does that. Now, I mean, I don't mean to say other houses are useless or they are bad or they are not so nice houses or maybe they are not prominent. I'm not saying like that. What I'm telling you is these houses are related to your inner well-being and your karmas externally the fifth and ninth inner well-being and tenth and eleventh your karmas externally so <clears throat> therefore it's crucial that you have malefics in these houses okay because if you have malefics in these houses then what happens is the anarthas which these malefics represent and who are the malefics now See, there are six anarthas. Kama, Kodha, Lobha, Moha, Mada, Matsarya. Lust, anger, greed, envy, pride, illusion. Okay. So, except Jupiter, Sun and Moon, all the malefics, the remaining six planets, they are actually malefics, to be honest. Always honest, but here specifically to be honest. So, Mercury and Venus are malefics. They are the worst of the worst malefics because... Why? Who is the worst malefic in astrology? It's not Saturn, it's not Rahu, it's Venus. Wow. Worst malefic. Why? I'm not uh, uh, quoting, uh, I, I'm not you know, making up stuff. Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, Kama Esha Krodha Esha Rajo Guna Samud Bhavaha Mahashano Maha Papma Vidhye Namiha Vairinam Lust, O Arjuna, is the most dreaded enemy of mankind the most sinful enemy of mankind krishna says this in the gita so therefore there is the worst malefic in astrology that is venus 
yes it's very charming and it makes us do abominable animalistic activities and when rahu comes it goes up to some other level <laughs> so therefore i would include uh, venus also and mercury also mercury represents the anartha of envy yes matsara that is the word kama is for venus okay so therefore if you have any planets uh, in these four houses it is really considered to be very good because now if you have any of these six planets in these houses then what happens you can work on these planets if you do not have then you it, it becomes relatively very difficult to work on these planets and if you do not work then uh, you may not be able to cross over it crossing over doesn't mean you bypass them but you either either uh, there are many ways how you can get over them okay. get over them means in a way get over them in a way that they don't influence you negatively anymore like let's talk of venus so krishna also says in the gita dharma viruddho bhuteshu kamosmi bhava tarshabha so krishna says that i am that sex life which is uh, not contrary to the principles of religion uh, it's not the dog life of kaliuga which people have they're just living like dogs and uh, they, they don't get married or even if they get married they don't have children they're living like dogs basically so that that's not what venus is that's rahu but these days that's becoming venus also <laughs> So, so the thing is, uh, one one way to get over them is uh, first uh, the first class. So scriptures say there are different classes of people. There's one first class category. Who is the first class? First class understands things by hearing. All right, I hear it and I understand. First class. That's it. <laughs> if I drink alcohol, I'll suffer. If I take meat, I'll suffer. All right, no problem. I understand. it's okay i won't take then there is uh, the second class category second class is the one who hears but mm -hmm, doubts the second class is skeptical and does not believe in the words of the gurus and the scriptures he's he's a bit skeptical he thinks oh, maybe still there's something but then he sees other people suffering or other people happy by doing certain activity then he believes that oh yeah, yeah, yeah what krishna says is right actually so his own realization is not enough uh, his own intelligence is not strong enough but when he sees and he hears other people then he realizes all right he has suffered he has he is happy all right so maybe i should do the same or i should not do the same to be unhappy and then we have the third class third category who has listened from the guru who knows the scriptures who has also seen others and so many examples but does not believe yet is not yet convinced so that person needs something which is known as anubhav which is experience all right the person has to get kicks and beatings from this material world the person has to get slaps and punches and you know <laughs> beatings and beatings like uh, it's like endless suffering the person has to undergo physical suffering traumatic suffering you know, like uh, horrendous suffering only then the person understands that's like the third class category okay and then there's another fourth class <laughs> fourth class is i have listened i don't believe i have seen i don't believe i have experienced i yet don't believe i still can't surrender to god that's the fourth class fourth category okay and kaliuga people are in the fourth category that's why you see people they are suffering so much in kaliuga 99% of the people in kaliuga they are depressed 99.9 i think <laughs> they have the best image in social media but yet they are lonely from inside even if they are in relationships they are lonely married people are lonely single people are lonely people who are in uh, relationships uh, premarital relationships they are lonely extramarital relationships they are also lonely people who have great jobs even they are unhappy people who don't have a job they are also unhappy 
why that's happening because uh, they are uh, submitting to the urges of these six planets actually okay so therefore if you have planets in these houses then you can work on these planets and you can uh, depending on the house and the horoscope uh, you may either be in the first category second or third or fourth category or maybe some other category fifth sixth cat category where uh, you need more beatings and more slaps from this material world to understand right you need more kicks in the face directly only then you'll understand so there are different types of people and it can happen that particular uh, in relation to one particular anartha which is uh, from one planet uh, it could happen that you are uh, you can handle those traits very easily it's not very difficult or it could happen that when it comes to another planet it's very difficult for you to handle like some people um, they can handle lust very easily you know sex desire but uh, when it comes to envy they are envious like snakes you know like have you seen snakes snakes are known for envy basically you know so they may not be lusty like animals and dogs but they're definitely envious like snakes <laughs> So yeah, so or it could be the uh, the other way around for somebody. Somebody may have control over sex desire, may not be that envious, but the person can be very angry. It's like so angry. Dantavakra is the demon who was liberated by Krishna, who signifies Krodha, anger, which is one of the six anarthas, which is signified by Mangal, Mars. Okay, so therefore. Um, if you have planets in these uh, houses or even linked with the lords of these houses uh, then uh, if you do the remedies for these planets depending on your horoscope then you will definitely be able to overcome them okay so therefore i do not go by this statement that malefics are good in now uh, upachya houses you know third sixth tenth or even 11th i mean 10th and 11th is there uh, but i don't agree to this that that just because they are malefics they are good in the third or sixth or 10th or 11th but you have to understand why why the fifth the ninth the 10th and the 11th why because these houses give us an opportunity to experience them okay and when we experience them or we uh, surpass them sometimes uh, they say that a fruit which is which has ripened falls down to the ground actually automatically but imagine a fruit is not ripe when you pull that fruit down what happens right so it, it's very similar let's take the example of venus so generally if you have had a good or decent stable married life then after one point you naturally become detached but imagine you have had miserable relationships it's like the fruit is being cut in between then what happens you know you you're always constantly searching for this you know imaginary soulmate twin flame or you know, some special creature which uh, a jobless person called god has made for you all right so yeah uh, god is god but he's not jobless <laughs> All right. Uh, his only job is not to uh, keep sitting and making soulmates for you. All right. Now, of course, there are no soulmates these days in Kaliuga. In Kaliuga, it's like soul groups. You know, every six months their soulmates change. So after some days, and maybe even now, you know, when a person looks down twenty years down the line at the age of forty, they may think that, oh yeah, you know, twenty to twenty-one, she was my soulmate, or 35 to 38, he was my soulmate, or whatever. Anything can happen in Kali. One, two, three, four, I don't know how many. <laughs> so it's like a soul group. So now, now uh, gods are becoming more and more jobless. So they are making soul groups uh, instead of soulmates. All right? This is how people of Kali Yuga think, actually. Right? So that will be all from my side. So if you have planet these malefics in these houses, then you are extremely fortunate okay don't think that saturn is bad in the fifth or ninth never 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 believe this nonsense never ever in the thousand years okay so therefore um, 
If you have, then you should do the necessary remedies in consultation with your uh, private mentor or with your astrologer. Okay, because for you, Saturn in fifth may behave in a different way because your Lagna is different. Your Saturn lords a particular house. Okay, so you cannot make a video for Saturn in ninth and you give remedies and it doesn't work. What if that Saturn is exalted in the Nabamsha and it is uh, afflicted? All right. What if it is debilitated and it is exalted uh, in some other divisional chart you know, apart from the Nabamsha? Whatever any planet, you know, any sign, anything, any Lagna, right? So therefore, uh, very closely you should sit with your mentor and see what remedies you can do to overall improve and get out of these anarthas. Because unless you conquer these anarthas, you cannot make spiritual progress. All right, that that is an illusion. Sometimes people think, oh, my lust is also continuing. You know, I am uh, having an animalistic life. It's fine after all. I can do what I want, but I'm very spiritual, you know, I'm, I read the Bhagavad Gita, I read, you know, I, I read uh, motivational books and all this. So, um, spiritual life and sense gratification go ill together. They can never go together. <laughs> so, if somebody thinks that by indulging in these six anarthas, they are practicing a spiritual life, then they're having the time of their life. <laughs> Yeah, they're so high somewhere that the moment they fall, they will collapse completely. All right, so read the Bhagavad Gita and understand what Krishna is trying to tell, how the anarthas are functioning. Read it only then you will understand. All right, uh, seeing astrology videos won't help you. Astrology will only tell you what problems are there, but astrology won't tell you in the next thousand years how to get out of it. Okay, so how to get out of it? There's, there's only one book which will tell you that. All right, so. Let's uh, read some random shloka. Mm -hmm. Do thou fight for the sake of fighting without considering happiness or distress, loss or gain, victory or defeat, and by so doing you shall never incur sin. Krishna is telling this to Arjuna. Wow. See, if you... If you fight without uh, considering loss or gain, victory or defeat, you won't incur sin. So Arjuna was thinking that he will uh, do, uh, he will commit very grievous sinful act activities by uh, killing his family members. But Krishna enlightened him. Right? Krishna said that, don't think you are doing this for yourself. Right? Don't think it's for you then you won't incur sin, all right? Otherwise, you will. <laughs> all right, that will be all from my side. If you are new to the channel, then please subscribe to it below. And if you want a consultation, you can also go to my website down below in the description section. God is there with you all the time. Just look to him and you will find him.